Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, I love to get into self-care that is very whole. So it's not just what we often think of as self-care, like taking care of your body through nutrition and exercise and spa trips and the like. Those are all super important. And if that's all that we focus on, then we're missing half of the story. So I also like to get into what I call courageous self-care, the stuff on the inside that is it can be uncomfortable, it can be unknown, it can be scary, and that's why it's super important to have a gut. And that's why I love to show up for you once or twice a week and get into this world of courageous self-care because it makes such a tremendous difference in energy and relationships and pretty much every area of your life is impacted and improved by courageous self-care. I don't want to do it alone though, so I also love to invite guests onto the show whose message aligns with courageous self-care. So today we have a guide with us, Corby Furrow. Corby, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. So Corby, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you love to get up to these days. Uh, well, what I love is what I do for a living, you know, and um, because most people in their life have disassociated either from their emotions or disconnected from relationships or numb themselves from feeling. And so what I get to do is reconnect all of that, you know, so that they can um, bring back parts of themselves um, back into relationships, learn to love themselves and step into that authentic self. And I love just seeing that transition that people happen when they, you know, when they free themselves from the burdens that they've been carrying and all the crap that, you know, they has been imposed on them. I mean, not in a bad way, but it's just life, right? Right. We get to um, other people's biases and belief systems. And so when we see that clear out, that's what really lights my fire up. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps because that <laughs> excites me as well. And I, I was thinking as you were speaking about when um, I used to be that person, totally disconnected from all emotions that were kind of the, the ones that aren't okay, yes. that we perceive to not be okay to show out in public. And uh, I remember on Friends, Chandler used to talk about how he was dead inside. And I started saying that. And then one day I realized, oh my gosh, that is true. Like I have numbed out to everything and yeah. uh, took some personal development and a lot of courses and yeah, going into that murky unknown territory to figure out that emotions are a good thing and they are temporary and it's good to have all of them. Yeah, it is. And, it, and so many people are still so afraid of it. And it's like, there is no good or bad. It's just what is. And when we can actually speak our truth and step into that, that's when we have the transformations and the healings happening because we're not fighting what is actually happening. Right. Oh, it's so powerful to embrace those emotions. And you're right. I think when I, I used to hide so much of who I was. Yeah. And when I started to learn to express emotions, not in wild ways, but just acknowledging them, mm -hmm. it helped me learn more about who I actually was. And uh, I was so scared that other people wouldn't like that person. But then yes. when I started sharing authentically, like, this is how I'm feeling right now. And it's not up to you to fix it. It's, it's just how it is right now. Then it, it was very liberating. Yeah, and it's very empowering in, in yourself because now you get to choose how you are and you're okay with where you're at, as you said, you know, and, and that allows you to then move forward. Yeah. yeah, and it's been such a powerful gift to share with our kids too. That, oh, yeah. Yeah, like I was thinking particularly with my son because we say strong boys and strong men do cry. Strong yes. boys and strong men do share how they're feeling. They don't keep it hidden. No. And they see that percolating a little bit out there in the regular world but it's still I think the still the message is be strong hide yes. what's going on that's still kind of mainstream it is yeah unfortunately and it is damaging and creates so many problems down the road because then they can't trust how they're feeling you know and you lose that intuition because well it can't be right because people are saying I, I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't feel this way but the fact is you feel this way and you will transition out of the feeling a lot faster than us bottling it. Because if you think about us stuffing um, our feelings into one of those little cans, you know, and when we pull the lid off, everything just explodes, yeah. right? So, but when we allow it to process, then we don't have any pressure in that can. It's just there. And then it dissipates. We don't have the big ugly cries, the big tamper, tamper tantrums, because we've released it. It hasn't built up the pressure. Right. You know, yeah. so we become healthier as a society. 
yes, if everyone knew how to master their emotions and acknowledge them and move through them, which is what they're meant to do in the first place, our lives would be so different because so much behavior is focused, I think, unconsciously on suppressing yes. emotions. Absol yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, you know, because of that disassociation, we only live in our head, which takes over. But I mean, our body, our nervous system is still running underneath. So we can pretend that nothing's happening, but the nervous system is going, oh no, a lot more is happening. Yeah. And that's where we get, you know, we'll start to have panic attacks, anxiety attacks. Why am I doing this? I can handle this. What's going on? Because we've missed all the little cues our body's been giving us all along because we're, I'm not paying any attention to it. So yeah, yeah. so it's, it, it's always telling us how to heal ourselves. But, and when we don't listen, it's going to give us a, something really big to catch our attention. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's just so exciting to talk about this stuff. <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> and in fact, it is, there are 12 foundations of courageous self-care and this um, emotional mastery and learning to navigate through your emotions and helping them move through is one of the foundational skill sets. And I call it um, cultivating your personal power. And I think the most powerful thing you can do is learn to move through your emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. Because everything's energy, you know, and once we do that and learn to be in the flow of it, we're not trying to, you know, swim upstream of the rapids and not getting anywhere, right? So now we can move with it and everything flows easy and our life is a lot better and, and we're happier, you know, and when yeah. we have joy, again, that brings up the collective of everything in, the, in this world. It changes everything. It does. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> but we have to start with ourselves. Exactly. Because you know, that's the only one we can really affect. And then we start that ripple effect because that gives, you know, I think as Marianne Williams says, says permission for others to do the same. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, although I could keep talking about this for days, yes. uh, I do love to get guests on the show to share a current favorite self-care practice. And I love to do that because I think the more we acknowledge what self-care is and that it's an individual thing and share our ideas, the more people will say, oh, well, I'm already doing that. I didn't know that was self-care. So yeah. ooh, maybe I'm better at this than I thought. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. What's something that you love to do right now for self-care? Um, for self-care is, is what I do is the emotional freedom techniques is tapping because as you tap and, and do it on a daily routine, um, what it's doing is actually conditioning the nervous system or toning the nervous system. It's called so it opens up that window of tolerance where we can handle more things in our day so that's a, I love doing that and I do that first thing in the morning and I do it throughout the day too because I also tap with my clients um, another one I love to incorporate is the Donna Eden five minute energy routine so you're incorporating the tapping and crossing and getting your energy moving and it only takes less five minutes or less you know which I love because when we're busy you know it's easy to just do that every now and again and boost your energy and get it going up and then my last favorite one is uh, going for a walk with my dogs and my husband and, and we go into the ravine and even though we're in the city, it's like we're in the forest, you know, and it's peaceful mm. and quiet and it just really has that healing, calming properties too. So those are my top three things that I really like to do to just kind of take care of myself and um, allow my system to feel good in, inside also. I'm always so excited when I meet someone else who knows about Donna Eden's daily energy. Yeah. <laughs> it is the best, yes. And you know what? And like, you just have to do it for a few days in a row and you can feel such a difference and such a shift in energy and how you show up in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, I've said this on the show before, but uh, probably if you are even a regular listener, you might not remember. So um, I, I bring a lot of new stuff into my family and lots of it. My husband's like, okay, that's really weird. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but with the daily energy routine, he could feel the difference, yeah. like you said, uh, very soon after implementing it. And uh, we get our kids to do it. Yeah. Right now it's, oh, the daily energy routine. <laughs> but what a foundational skill set to have moving yeah. through life and uh so yeah we're instilling it in them to do it at a young age and boy it makes such a tremendous difference like they i haven't been sick really since i started doing it yeah and uh my husband same thing and then my kids they get colds here and there but then when i hear what other kids at school have gone through i see oh they're just skimming the surface of what was otherwise a week long or two week long debilitating illness for other kids. So it's exactly different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause when we um, are doing things that help our energy flow in that we are bringing in all the good endorphins, the good DHL hormones, all those things that keep us healthy. 
and help our immune system, which then, like you said, doesn't knock us down like everybody else. Because when we're in a constant state of stress, we've got this pool of this bad chemicals in us, that cortisol, the adrenaline that are keep running through us because those are our tigers today as our stressors. And we, we, we don't give our bodies a break unless we do things that help us to calm our nervous system, to bring in the good hormones. You know, so when we get rid of that bad soup out of us, now we can stay healthy a lot longer and our immune system is built up. You know, because when we're in a stress response, that's when our body gets sick. You know, if you think about it, when, pe when uh, people do have a transplant of something, an organ transplant, our bodies are put into stress because then it won't reject what's coming in. Mm. You know, so that's powerful. So when we can take our body out of stress, we are functioning at our highest capacity that we can do. Right. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> what you can do is Google daily energy routine, Donna Eden. Yes. And uh, she is delightful. Her, you will see her energy. She's like, I don't know when her third, well, she seems like she's a 30 year old, but I'm sure she's, she's 72 ish. I think 72 or 74 yeah. now. Yeah. She's amazing. Crazy. She's so yeah. youthful and vibrant. Yes. And then uh, Corby, in case people haven't heard of tapping before, do you want to explain a little bit about what that is? Sure. Tapping our emotional freedom techniques is what we use. We like to refer tapping as it's kind of your self-care routine. You know, anybody can do that. We like to differentiate that now because tapping is you tap on meridian points in your body that help to calm the amygdala in our brain, help bring in the good endorphins, the, the good um, serotonins in our gut, all that kind of stuff. So we're toning that nervous system just by tapping getting ourselves into a calm place when we get, you know, distracted or we're, we're feeling overwhelmed or we're rushed for something. We start just doing what's called bronze level tapping. Now we use nine points that are on our body to do that, or else we are built for stealth mode. So it's really good. So at, on our hands, there's uh, meridian points. So, and they come on the top. So if you're holding your hand as if you're going to shake somebody's hand on the top there is uh, where you would squeeze by that kind of moon shape on your finger and you would squeeze on each finger and your thumb. And that is actually bringing that calming force into your body when, you, when you're feeling a bit dysregulated. Um, so those are great things to do. And that's what we use as tapping. What we call emotional freedom techniques is kind of more what I do as a practitioner. We go deeper into, rather than just calming you in that moment, let's see if we can actually take the emotional charge to what is triggering you to be dysregulated in that moment. So then we'll use the points and, we, and we'll use set up phrases and different things like that to find what is that underlying belief that's holding you, you know, that keeps showing up in your life to cause this dysregulation. And that's where we use the emotional freedom techniques. And we've got now what's called conscious EFT through the National Emotional Training Institute in Toronto. And um, it, it's a four phase approach. So we, it's all about, you know, the safety of our nervous system. Um, we don't need to, like when EFT first came out onto the world, it was like, let's go the darkest, deepest, you know, tra traumas and heal you. But we weren't regulating the person in the here and now, yeah. right? So we could actually traumatize people more. So now we're saying, whoa, we need to help you get regulated in the here and now. And then once you're doing that, then if you need to, you can go down deeper. But if you're getting the life you want and the energy you want and the results you need, you don't need to go any further. Mm. you know, because you're living with that and you're functioning fine. Yeah. Right. But why dig up something if it's not an issue? Right. Yeah. So it's like deal with what's here. And now we give you the resources. Now you can lead that life where you're energized and healthy and, and can think clearly and you're more compassionate in the world, you know, so now you can make an impact and a difference to how you were supposed to be in this world. Cause you're not carrying all this crap that you, that you've been carrying with you. So, yeah, so that's kind of how we like to differentiate the two because one is, yes, you can do it all on your own. It's very empowering. You can get through stuff that is happening in your world. But at some point when you get really stuck and you can't just seem to get off that little treadmill, that's when you need a coach. That's when you need somebody to, you know, because we can see different things and we can say, oh, what's that spot you just skipped over? Let's just go there and see what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, that's a great explanation. Thank you for that. I didn't know about the, the hand um, meridian. So that's mm -hmm. super helpful. Yeah. And it's so easy because you can walk in and you can do it one handed too, right? Just use your thumb to press yeah. on, on the sides and nobody knows you're doing it. You know, I have a lot of people who have meetings and that and they said, Oh yeah, I'm tapping underneath the table all the time just to keep myself regulated so I can say what I need to say. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to move into your story of courage, but first we're going to have a quick little break for, uh, a message from the sponsors and uh, we will be right back. 
Here we are, we're back, and we are going to dive into a story of courage. And before you share that, Corby, one of the reasons I love to hear stories of courage is because courage is an energy, and sometimes it feels like it's outside of us. And we say, oh, that person's so courageous, but I'm not. And the more we hear stories of courage, the closer we bring it to ourselves, into our own sphere of energy until... At some point, we decide to live more courageously and hearing stories about it, we, as humans, we crave stories, we need stories, and hearing other people's stories of courage helps to embody that energy and bring it closer into us. So having said that, I would love to hear what you have as a story of courage for us today. Yeah, I was thinking of this, and I mean, there's lots of stories, but one that was kind of sticking out for me, so it must be the one I have to share, yes. <laughs> was um, when I was uh, leaving my marriage, actually, it was a very stressful time. Um, I didn't want to be a divorcee, you know, I'd been a child of divorce, and it was like, that was the last, like, I was not going to let that happen to me. And um, it was one of those things where I didn't listen to my gut, you know, it wasn't a relationship that I was yay, this is the exact one I want. But it was like, oh, you know, maybe I won't be loved again, or I can fix him, it'll be good. Mm -hmm. And you know, if they, and we had some good parts, but there was a lot more um, bad parts than good parts, you know, they couldn't outweigh the other. So it came down to a point where um, I knew at, in that moment that if I didn't leave, I was going to lose myself forever. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I just couldn't let that happen. And so that's the time like, I mean, I, it took me 11 years to get to that point. But it was like, I can't do this anymore. And if I do, like say that, that will literally be, you know, I'm, I'm drowning here and I can't do this. And so, um, you know, it was a lot of soul searching at that time. And I didn't have the tools I have today to get me through that. So it was a very stressful time. Um, and so when I did make that leap to, to change, that did take a lot of courage because, but it, it took the point of, it was literally, I'm either losing myself or I move on. You know, and it was, it just felt like this big crossroads. And so I did leave and it wasn't easy. Um, and, but it was just, you just put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. And then thankfully I did find EFT later on. I mean, this is like 15 years, 10 years later. And um, because you still carry all of the emotional baggage with you, mm -hmm. you know, and so when things would happen or, or somebody would say something, it might trigger that memory and then they feel that yuck in your body. So using EFT, I've been able to clear out all that stuff. So I'm not triggered. Now I can see the gifts of that relationship of, you know, of me leaving of all these things that happened and I can embrace it now rather than being like, Oh, I wish I'd never happened. And I wish, you know, it, it was so awful and whatever. I don't carry that with me anymore, you know, and that's a, a, a big gift. And I think is to just keep pursuing, you know, to up level ourselves and, and using tools to help us to heal uh, is the biggest gift we can give ourselves and, and the courage to move on when it isn't right for us. Mm hmm. That is an amazing story. Thank you for sharing it. And I want to dive into the moment you talked about where it was making that decision. So I'm curious about what that moment looked like. Like, how did you figure out that there was this uh, crossroads? Were you journaling? Or were you thinking about it? Or what? Do you remember what that yeah, was? Yeah, it was, it was kind of always on my mind. And I had been like, I mean, I'd been to counselors. I had read the Bible. I read uh, family, you know, books and relationship books and, uh, you know, everything I could think of to try and make sense of what was going on and how I could, could be there. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of the tools I have now, but I, you know, I knew a little bit about deep breathing and a little bit about, um, you know, talking about it, but it still wasn't healing it. But when I, you know, after I'd done even like said, reading all the books I could, and even the Bible, just trying to think, make some sense out of this. And it, I knew that, you know, it, it just wasn't going to work for me anymore. And like, say, if I didn't leave in that moment, all was like, I would not be here today, I don't think, mm. because I would have just been shriveled up into a person because as soon as I made that decision it was like somebody took their hand off my head and it was like I could finally breathe it was just that you know it was just that expansion that yes and I didn't realize how much of that tension I was holding with me so yeah it was a lot of like say consulting with people um trying to you know just trying to find answers from anywhere that I could find mm -hmm. you know, and then just coming to the conclusion yeah that it's time to listen to me now and um yeah. and that was big because 
I didn't listen to me. You know, like we talked in the beginning, it was like, you, you feel dead inside. And that's where I was getting to be. And that's, that wasn't me before, you know, it was like the life was sucking out. So when you notice that, like say my body was trying to get at my attention and finally it was like, okay, it's time to listen now. Mm -hmm. It sounds like your heart knew for a long time yes. what the decision was, but your head was uh, trying to figure it out and rationalize it. And well, maybe I can fix it. And yeah, this person can tell me the answer. And when you, it sounds like it took a lot of courage to take the, take the, in that moment, listen to your heart and allow it to guide you rather than your head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause the head was, yeah, we're not going to be like mom and dad. We're not going to be from a divorce thing. And you know, my kids were at the same age that when I, I was in that divorce thing. So it's like, Oh my God, it is history repeating itself here, you know, even though it's different circumstances. So yeah. And, and, and having my kids to think about too, you know, really pushed me on too. It's like, cause I didn't want them to live in that um, toxic relationship anymore yes. you know, because they're, they're seeing and they're observing you know, um, what's going on and seeing me, even though I think I'm keeping it together, you know, they were seeing me just being staring out into the, I remember my one daughter, like, why are you just sitting there staring? And I, you, you know, hadn't even realized I was doing that, but that was just how much the stress had gotten to me. It's all the thinking I'm doing. All I it can is. do is stare. <laughs> <It is. laughs> yeah. So, it, so it, it is, it's listening to that heart, you know, and our, and our body and our heart tell us so much. It's when we can work in conjunction with our brain because it does, all of our parts of us have a part to play in keeping us safe or what it thinks is keeping it safe, you know, and, and part of that was fear because it was a toxic relationship that, you know, it was one that where there was lots of anger or it was fine, you know, and it, so it's, it's hard to leave. You get in that space where you think, Oh, I can't leave this, you know, or what's going to happen. So, um, no, it was, it was a good decision. And, and from there it just, you know, kept getting better and better. What you're saying, Corby, is what I talk about prioritizing your own well-being. Mm -hmm. And I think the when we hear that, it can feel like, yeah, I'm going to exercise. Yeah, I'm going to drink my water. Yeah, I'm going to get the amount of sleep I need. And yes, those are all super important. And if you're doing all those things, but you're not listening to your heart and you're doing things based on how they look to others or how you imagine they will impact others, this is a perfect example. So you were concerned about your kids. You were concerned yes. about uh, how your appearance would be to other people if you got divorced, just like your parents. Yeah. And that is what I mean by prioritizing your own well-being. It is listening to your heart, making the decision that has been on your heart for a long time mm -hmm. that is so scary. Yeah. And usually what happens is we what if in a negative way. What if this happens? What if I damage my kids permanently? What if this is the wrong choice? And it, I think when we're having a lot of those what ifs, it's an indication that there is a courageous decision to be made. And uh, you have given a great example of how to do that. So I appreciate you sharing that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, no, it is. It's uh, listening to your heart is the, the key to anything. And, and like you said, as a mom, especially, uh, you know, um, we often prioritize ourselves at the very, very bottom, yeah. you know, and it took a big, you know, push to get me to actually say, wait a minute, I need to look after myself here. Yeah. You know, because, because if I don't look after myself, I can't look after anybody else. Exactly. And yeah, just the difference of you being the mom that you are today, vibrant and alive and yeah. uh, experiencing these wonderful healing techniques versus someone who's staring off into space, not knowing. Oh, exactly. What a difference yeah. Yeah. In how you're mothering, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So even though it's scary to prioritize your own well-being and to listen to your heart, I urge you, and I think so many people are at this point where they're, they know what they're doing is not working, or they know innately that there's something that could be so much better. And it just takes that courage to do it. And that's why I wanted to have you share your story of courage, because it is so powerful. And yeah. If one person can do it, I, I remember learning about the Yahoo theory. If that Yahoo can do it, so can I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally it because it is. And usually once we step through that curtain of fear, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. Never. You know? It and is it amazing. <laughs> it's the stories we tell ourselves because we're more comfortable where we're at because we know how to function in that, even if it's dysfunctional. 
you yes. know, because the other side, we don't, it's unknown and that's scary. And that's, we're built to, you know, try and keep ourselves safe, whatever that safe is, you know? So yeah, jumping through that curtain of fear and having the courage to move on then, you know, gives you that boost to, Oh, I can take the next step now and I can take the next step. And maybe it's not as bad as I, I think it is, but yeah, I believe everybody just, just take the step. Exactly. And what you're saying is that you don't have to do it alone. Like you provide amazing support for people going through that. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions with self-care is because that word self is in there. I think people think, oh, I've got to do it all by myself. But no, the best thing you can do for yourself as you go into the uncharted territory is to have a guide who can support you, whether it's through EFT or ideas or uh, like there's just so much support out there. There are so many people who want to help and have the tools to be able to help you through it. So I, I know that people are going to be intrigued and interested in how you can support them and uh, please share how they can connect with you online. Yeah, absolutely. My website's radiantcoresolutions.com and they can find me there. And yeah, I've got lots of information um, on the website that they can learn more about what EFT is and what I do there. And absolutely, we are not meant to do this alone. We are a community and we're all connected. You know, and the more we realize that as we make more connections, we provide more energy out there and, you know, fulfillment for ourselves because it's when we shut ourselves off that, you know, we get disconnected, disassociated and numbing ourselves because we, we, you know, shut us down into this small little world of our own rather than, you know, expanding out. Yeah. So important. And you, you mentioned before we started the interview that you've got a free gift on your website. Yes. I've got a 30 minute um, consult that people can book in so they can click the link and we can have a conversation and see what's going on for them and how I might be able to help them or just give them some tips that might help them in their daily life. Perfect. That is super generous. So I do encourage you, if you are on the precipice of making a decision to listen to your heart, or if you are feeling numb and like you are suppressing things, or you've got behaviors that um, are hiding those emotions, please do reach out to Corby because she's going to help you, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Well, Corby, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much for taking time to be on the show and sharing your energy with us. Oh, you're welcome. I love doing this stuff. So it's great to be with like-minded people. Exactly. And dear listeners all over the world, thank you so much for listening. You can give yourself your giant radiant gold star for showing up today and educating yourself on the possibilities around courageous self-care. Plus, I'm going to give you some super secret bonus points today, the bonus points of life. So (laughs) I don't know why, but I remember a a phys ed teacher who gave those super secret bonus points and kids would work so hard for them. (laughs) So I hope you enjoy your super secret bonus points. And just to leave you with the final thought that If we had a world where everyone prioritized their own well-being from the inside out and people were living authentically, honoring emotions and making decisions from the heart, oh my gosh, all so many of the problems we have would just dissipate and we would be living into the fullest, most authentic, um, conscious versions of ourselves and oh, that's a world I want to live in. So do come back and listen again to the next episode because there is always lots of strategic action you can take around courageous self-care. There is always information about how you can put yourself first and feel great about doing that. So please come back and listen again soon. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now. 